2022, a joint Polish-Danish feasibility study. Gas system, the Polish transmission system operator, together with Energinit, has uh, applied for EU funding for a feasibility study to investigate the possibilities to build the Baltic pipe. There will be a map specifying specifically what is the Baltic pipe and what are the likely geographical locations. Uh, we are very, we are very grateful that we received funding through the CEF program, Connecting Europe facility. We have a process envisioned that if we can demonstrate the project to be feasible, then uh, after this, the current period, which is the feasibility study period, going into next year, there could be a business case development in the period 2016 to 2020 probably shorter than 2020 because then we will be allowed to, uh, to build a tie-in between Danish infrastructure and Norwegian export infrastructure in the North Sea that could be in operation by 2020. And a Baltic pipe could then be added to this which would just give justification for the, for the inter interconnection capacity in the North Sea by the year 2022. What are we doing in the feasibility study? First and foremost, we're trying to establish if this has community and social economic benefits, both in a GINET and gas system of Poland, apply social economic criteria for investments. We believe that key to this is looking at the market model, maybe not so much the market model in, in Danish Swedish gas markets as much as the market model in Poland and in the countries adjacent to Poland. These countries have a series of either derogations or moderate deviations from a European market model. It's simply not as liberalized as we could wish. Uh, the idea is that this project could um, be a catalyst for market reforms and to internalize all these countries. The economic Feasibility will be, uh, will be justified according to socio-economic terms and there will be an, a long series of measures that we include in order to, to uh, assess the feasibility. Among them security of supply, both in the Danish market, which the Norwegian tie-in will have a huge impact on, and also in the Polish market where the Baltic pipe will be uh, a game changer. The third component is the technical solutions to this. Engineers looking at maps and drawing lines and, and deciding where these changes are possible. It is likely, especially if the project will be realized with a significant capacity, that, that there will need to be strengthening of the internal Danish gas, gas infrastructure. That will mean new pipelines in new locations and as most of you will know, Denmark is quite densely populated, it's quite difficult to build in new areas, so there's a few limited choices that we are looking at. The capacity will be assessed as scenarios from around 2, 2.5 billion cubic meters and all the way up to 10 billion cubic meters. Naturally, the cost of these solutions will very much depend on which uh, capacity we're aiming at but also there is a spread in the cost depending on what solution we choose. If it's a, a two to three billion cubic meters project, <coughs> we can use most of the existing Danish infrastructures and it will be a least cost solution from our point of view. Whereas Baltic pipe cost will be quite high as a unit cost. If we go all the way up to 10 billion cubic meters, there'll be more investments in the Danish and the Norwegian systems, but the, the efficiency, the unit cost of Baltic pipe will uh, reduce dramatically. Then we are looking at the tie into Norway. Norway is not an EU member and therefore is not eligible to support under the EU Connecting Europe facility. So we are dealing with Norway as an add-on, uh, fully financed as a, as a feasibility study by Energinet and Gassystem and it will have the involvement of GASCO, the Norwegian offshore transmission system operator. The final activity, introductory dialogue with environmental agencies and stakeholders involves uh, a start up on the environmental impact assessment process where we're trying to warm up the various authorities for a discussion once it becomes concrete and urgent. 
Why do we do it? We do it because the Baltic states and, or the Baltic Sea area is one of the few areas within the European community where we can expect an increase in gas demand over the next years. That is primarily driven by the Polish development in Polish gas demand. We only show it historically until today, but in the future the, the demand is expected to increase from around 16 billion cubic meters to something like 22 billion cubic meters. At the same time, long-term long supply agreements between Russia and Poland will end. Therefore, the Polish, authority, or the Polish operator is asking the question, how do we meet the future demand? How do we potentially replace Russian supplies? Could we even negotiate a better deal with Russia if we have diversified supply through the Baltic pipe? There are a number, okay, there are two elements in it. One is the upstream tie-in. We show here in the graph the, the minimal investment between existing, Russia, uh, existing Norwegian export infrastructure and the Danish offshore system uh, with a tie-in to hard platform. The Baltic pipe is typically explained as a direct pipeline between Denmark and Poland bi-directional starting somewhere in Everøre and ending in Nihorce, I think, in Poland. Uh, there are various possibilities. We probably will remove or send down the, the point of, of exit from the Danish system southwards uh, if we increase the capacity above 3 billion cubic meters. That will be somewhere south of Kø. Uh, similar, there are a dramatic increase in the complexity of, of getting the capacity from the Norwegian system if we increase beyond these three, four, five billion cubic meters. Then we go further and further north in the, in the Norwegian system in order to, to realize that increase in capacity. <coughs> Today, the route is when we add the various tariff elements that are in the existing route then it's significantly more expensive to go from Norwegian infrastructure through Denmark and the Baltic pipe and end up in Poland. It is significantly cheaper to go through the existing pipeline system on the Dutch-German border, transmission system through, uh, through Germany and into Poland. However, the Polish TSO believe that although there is a technical capacity on the border point, commercially it is, it is difficult for, for Polish actors to gain the capacity on the on the German-Polish border. Nevertheless, we believe that it's necessary for this pipeline to be competitive. So we're trying to look at what can you do on this highly complex line from Norway down to Poland through Denmark. That is through a merging of tariff zones as our main answer to that solution. To ensure that there is one entry tariff to the Danish transmission system in a wide sense offshore one exit cost from it towards the Baltic pipe. Similar, we imagine that the Baltic pipe will tariff-wise be internalized in the gas systems tariff area, so there's a minimum amount of, of payment points on the system, and hopefully the lowest possible transportation cost for the users. The benefit for the entire system is that we can increase the transportation volumes for the Danish system. This is a graph that, that we have shown to you on many an occasion. As a result of reduced gas demand in Denmark, unit cost is increasing dramatically. If we increase the volume, we will have the opportunity to, to lower the unit cost even quite significantly. This line here represents what it would be the price development if we have added 2 billion cubic meters per year. The even lower graph here shows us the impact of a 7 BCM per year solution. So from the point of view of us as, as custodians of the Danish transmission system, the Baltic pipe and the transit project is the way that we can ensure stable or even lower prices in the future towards our system users. You will be duly informed during the process. It will be quite transparent and we will publish, I believe, from various time to times, the results of, of our work. Are there, at this stage, any comments or questions from your side to these projects in the study?
you are, as so I fully confident that we will build it in time. It will be a great success. Thank you. Thank you, Molly, and uh,